Okay. And we're getting a recap from Andrew? Yes. When we last left our heroes, we had decided instead of uh, pouncing on the trolls who were busy consuming all of our deli meat, which we like to call horses, <laughs> we to head to the main section of the castle. And we found for the first time in Crimson Hawk a better way forward. Wandering through the center of the castle into the large open space, we found lots of rubbish and ruins. Opening several doors, we encountered monsters and skeletons which were happily turned by our powerful cleric drawn and we were able to blitzkrieg on many of the different monsters that we took on excepting the green slime which we chose to just say no after that in the end we stumbled into a fascinating room filled with all sorts of archaic magic another reason lorath you need to hang out with us more because we then did what we do best which is loot and run we stole <laughs> borrowed, and took everything we could get our hands on and happily made our way back unfortunately before we were able to conclude we met yet a second run of minions of set this was the upgrade version, the ones who considered them themselves the tough and rough boys, and they attempted to bargain with us for tools used by both Lance and Drawn. We just said no, and off they've gone. Technically, we said piss off. <laughs> uh, yeah, great. Um, now we've reached the point where uh, it's a special feature that we do for the guest star, who is the inimitable Chris Fox, uh, amazing author of the Magitech series and the role-playing game, and uh, guru to a lot of us authors in the way of uh, data science. Uh, if you're a writer, a science fiction writer, his six-figure author series is a must-read. Um, James, I think you have a gift for our uh, for uh, Lorath the Pompous. I do indeed. You are, Lorath, you're still with us? I am. Okay, good. You are going to be part of a playtest group that um, I'm going to say a set of names, and you're going to pick the name without knowing exactly what the artifact is. Ooh, I love it. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Spoiler, you're not going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's important to feel like you won something. <laughs> yeah, really. Really. The the Wardian Sword of Honor, the Wardian Ring of Life Stealing, the Wardian Shield of the Hero, the Wardian Sphere of the Fighter, the Wardian Sphere of the Wizard, the Wardian Sphere of the Cleric, and the Wardian Sphere of the Thief. Which one would you like? I'll take the ring. Okay, very good. All right, so write this down, buddy, or at least remember it. Um, you slap a thing with the ring, and it takes 1d8 points of, of damage, and you get that 1d8 points in your own body. Um, and what's the effect? Okay, oh, the, the, the effect is that you... Your eyes change to the eyes of whatever you slapped. So he's kind of okay. like slap it or slap. He's got to he's got to slap it with his open hand. So if I backhand somebody, it won't work. No, no, come on, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not that bad of a bastard DM. You just have to hit it with your with your hand one way or another. Got it. Uh, and is it permanent? Is the eye effect permanent? The eye effect is permanent, yes. Bad okay. things could really happen. What if I, so if I see something whose eyes I actually like, I could get the eyes by slapping it. Yes, you could. <laughs> or you might win. We know where there's a beholder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this could be milked. You know, I, I even I never even thought about that. Seven eyes with seven powers would be magnificent. Great. I want an eye of disintegration. <laughs> yeah. Who, who doesn't? Okay, so we are at Crimson City in the – I'm sorry, Crimson City. We're, we're at Crimson Hawk uh, in the Crimson Hawk campaign, and we are in Crimson City. And the, the city is abuzz with horrific news. Something went to the docks on the night of the full moon and turned all the sailors on 20 different ships into piles of sand. And there is this weird – blue sand trail that goes from all the way from the docks to the front gates and apparently the five gate guards that were there
technical difficulties. A city business they want to do. And uh, okay, then we are going to uh, follow the trail to the castle. Okay, now the question is, we're not, how are they traveling? Well, um, we are able or unable to get them and procure more scrolls of my uh, custom spell. They're getting unusually, the scrolls are getting unusually expensive. Give me an idea of what expensive means and we'll see. Seven, we 750 gold apiece. Holy mackerel. I think I have, that, um, oh, go ahead. Horses are cheaper. I was going to say, I think they're walking. Um, uh, well, if they're walking, that that's a problem because, you know, if you bring back sacks and sacks of gold and treasure, <clears throat> I will cover the cost. <clears throat> then we will have it. Oh, if you've got a little, fine. Then we will uh, cast our area and Ukla mount spells and uh, ride. Okay, so you're in other words, We're Scorpio. Buying. Scorpio is buying all the scrolls for everybody. Uh, looks like he's buying four. Uh, I have the two. I already have. Okay, Scorpio, no scroll spell for you. You must ride your war charger. Oh, that's right. You've got your charger. All Cavaliers right, so. Cavaliers have a specific honor. So how much is my charger going to cost? No, you got it. You just get okay. it for being a Cavalier. Um, and, uh, okay, I, should, I shouldn't really say this, but you might want to bring along some of your men of arms to guard it when you go in the castle from the two-headed trolls. Yes, yeah, Scorpio, remember our conversation. Remember our conversation, Scorpio. Have your men take the mounts back uh, with them and then just report in on a daily basis. That is the plan. They will okay. pick us up like our uh, own little medieval Uber. Very good. <laughs> Before we leave, um, are there any scrolls available for evocation, fireballs, magic missiles? The, well, they're very expensive, but, and actually, you aren't a member of the guild, so not for you. You could give money to Andrew Weirdna, and he could buy spells for you. Got it, but we haven't met yet, right? No, yeah, you met. Well, I guess we have. Oh, your okay. Um, your your boyhood friends. Okay, great. <laughs> so also, I hear that I he's know, investigating this. Question, would um, it be... So did you want to buy so some... Quite a question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I, I, I was going to say, if we've got somebody who's willing to go ahead and take, you know, you know, one or more horses back and forth while we're adventuring, would it make more sense economically to, you know, get horses and not have them eaten, you know, by the same people? A horse costs you 200 gold by, these days. Right, versus 750 per. Yeah. For the scrolls. So uh, what, what I'm saying is, uh, if, if Lance's people can... You know, take take that uh, our bot horses along with his cavalier horse uh, back and forth and keep them safe from the trolls. Then it's cheaper that way. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven horses. I don't need a horse. I have. I come BYOB. So six horses at two hundred gold. Yep. All right. I'll cover everybody's horse. Wow. What a deal. That cavalier is filled with we, we, honor and justice. All right. Anything Which is else? A lot cheaper than the scrolls. Lorath, did you want to buy some spells from the guild? Um, I do actually. If there are any fireballs available, I'd like to grab some of those. Um, okay. Also... So normally, normally they're three thousand gold a uh, fireball spell, but because Wordner's a member of the guild, it's only two thousand gold. I'll get two of them. Okay. All right. Then we we sally forth. All right, Very good. A quick note. I just. Uh, replenished at the city my two flasks of oil, my ten foot pole, and my rope and my spices. Yeah, no problem at all, there, buddy. Okay. Um, I would like okay, to so replace these. Okay, so we, we head small... out of the city and actually using tracking, using uh, Chromethus's tracking, he sees a thin blue column of blue tinged sand that leaves the Greyhawk gates and goes towards. Uh, Greyhawk gates. Every time I say Greyhawk, you guys have to say Crimson Hawk. Hey, James. <laughs> Thank you. James, every time you say Greyhawk, God kills a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much for that. Yes. JR and, uh, and Nick will know where that's from. <laughs> okay, so anyway, you head 
you head towards Crimson Hawk Castle, and you're you're following actually a trail of blue sand, and the blue sand goes the ten miles to the castle, and it it goes right into the ruins of the dwarf tower. Hmm. Dwarf tower. Uh, can we do spellcraft on the sand, Jim? Yes. What would you like to know? Um, looking at the content of it, is it magical in nature? It's very magical and it's very cursed. Cursed. We will so that... check in with the dwarves. Okay, then. This is kind of interesting. You guys now have an ethical dilemma. Okay. You see the four dwarves in humanoid form lying on the ground, lying on the floor of the of the ruins, um, has has humanoid piles of sand. And beside each one of the four dwarves, um, for for Loras benefit, um, this tower is uh, is kind of owned and controlled by dwarves, and they take ten percent of any treasures that you bring up, plus the best gem that you have when you bring it up, and. So now your ethical problem is this. Those four dwarves are lying there as humanoid piles of sand. They're, they're unbelievably powerful, magical, two-handed warhammers are lying right beside them, not sanded at all. And off to the left is an unusual amount of treasure. As you look at it, you see three great big backpacks that have 200 pounds of gold. You see two great big backpacks of silver that have 200 pounds of silver. You see one backpack that has 200 pounds of platinum. And you see a great big sack of gems and Prometheus's sword goes nuts. How? We revive them and challenge them to single combat. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> they are deep fried. They're going to have to wait for we, we, Well, you don't know that they're dead, but you know that they're humanoid sand piles. Uh, humanoid sand piles. And we resent them anyway. We, we should I, just take 10% of their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I asked my, 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 my sword for a gem valuation estimation of the gems in, in, the, in the sack. There must be at least 100,000 gold in gems. Wow. I, I would and like I, to, and I want I want that big star sapphire. Uh, of course he does. I, I would Are you like to give me a wish for it. No. Well, then I don't know. John, what do you think about the idea of remove curse? So I guess we have a couple of choices. Well, well, first uh, I can detect whether they're dead because if their souls are still there, Anubis. Would yeah, know. They're, they're, so not like... they're not dead. They're not dead. Well, that's a good one. Well, but see that's. I'm... That's the ethical dilemma that you guys have. Well, that treasure is just sitting there. You could take it and go back to the city and be done for the day. <laughs> I like these guys. We've got like friends you. and family and their little dwarf cubs that are running around with full beards that are come after us. <laughs> I believe we have a moral obligation to rescue this treasure. <laughs> and, yeah. the treasure. I like your thinking there, buddy. And with one sentence, Lorath becomes a permanent member of the party. <laughs> <laughs> I like these guys. I I, I'm awful. I'm awful neutral. You I, like the guys? Yeah, I like the guys. I beat them in a drinking contest. They were fair about it. So what are you gonna do? Uh, I think let's try to figure out the curse and and then uh, extract a tithe on them on the from the other side. Uh, right. They they should have to tithe the each of our individual deities as uh, as thank you for, <laughs> for their salvation. Now I have remove curse as one of my memorized spells. Yes, um, but I've got to spell magic if yours fails. So. Right. So I mean, but that's the that's the only one I have. That's the only remove curse I have like with me in my pocket. So, um, if I use let's it now... Wait. Let's wait. Well, if we leave them here, they'll probably be looted before we come back. So, we've got yes. this decision. So, our challenge is to either help them now and earn some, uh, possibly either more discounts, uh, a percentage of their take, or at least goodwill, which I think is our best bet right now. This is going to allow us better access to the Dwarf Tower, or we leave them be and... It is catch as catch can. 
Everybody vote. Leave them be or bring them back. Bring them back. I'm going to bring them back. Bring them yeah. back. Yeah, I'm saying bring them back. back. Okay, it's unanimous. Yeah. Cool. Am I still I'm lawful holding. good, by the way? <laughs> if you want to be. What do you no, want? No, because I, you know, I, I, I got converted to Cuthbert, right? So. <laughs> that, Cuthbert. that means you. That means you have to be lawful good. Yeah. So yeah, I vote bring him back. Okay. All right. I'm gonna hit him with remove curse. Okay. You can only hit one. All right. So I'll, I'll hit. I don't know the one on the left. <laughs> okay. And the sand pours off of his body, and he stands up uh, and has a coughing fit. Pat him on his back. Okay, he appreciates that. I'm gonna pull he, out my uh, wine and offer him some of the uh, the good ale from Crimson Hawk. Okay, he he drinks it and spits it out, and he says that tastes like orc piss. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing drinking orc piss? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, and so he's he's very grateful. Um, he says, "Could you guys uncurse my other three brothers?" Oof. Um, I. Could tomorrow, if you want to stand guard no, over but them. I can provide elf piss, if that's better than orc piss. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not good. Um, well, tell them that we can, Let's... we're, we're going to go down and try to figure this out, but we'll, we'll try to come back and get your guy. But, uh, you know, we did the one, so what does that get us? Uh, what kind of reward would you like? We'll take that sack full of gems. Well, hang on. Let, let's decide. Do we care about the gems the most? Or do we the sword, care? The sword does. <laughs> yeah, the sword does. And so I'm outvoting it while we think. Um, we're, we're saving your life, and we've saved your treasure. Therefore, we free. How many times? Um, let's see. Chronicling your total GP value here, I'm going to estimate you have a number somewhere north of around 400,000 in value. So I say the value is half a million. Uh, give you 250,000. Not counting gems. Um, at 250, then you give us uh, the gem of the sword's choice. If you like. <laughs> All right, he does. So, so as, uh, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. What's the sword want? I don't know. What does the sword want? There you the go. Sword, the sword wants the star sapphire. All right, the sword takes the star sapphire. So oh, I, my goodness. That is a beautiful thing worth at least 40,000 gold. Right. And nobody gets XP for it because you're stupid sword. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Yes, I, I couldn't have put that better myself, my friend. I whisper to the sword that it's not stupid; that it's beautiful. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. Does the star fire, sapphire do anything? Is it magical? No, it's not magical. But he, he just loves it so much. The the sword says, "When we have to fight that arch mummy." I will fight extra hard just for you. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Well, and and I say to Fever, his sword, uh, we want you to dance while Chrome fights. You fight. Yes, that's no problem at all. So no, as good job. So as uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm good. So as uh, as you know, they're they're adjusting and and pulling out stuff. Uh, and the dwarf is obviously very upset by you know the fact that he's had, having to give up an expensive piece of treasure. Yeah, um, it hurts. Yeah. You know, I, I I hold on to his shoulders and you know I whisper into his ear like a creepy politician. Now that's two hundred and fifty for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just pat him on the back and I keep going. Just a minute, I have to roll dice on that one. <laughs> Um, so, so what's the Crimson Hawk equivalent of Sicily? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna go for that. Let's see. I'm not waiting. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah, he he says fine. Excellent. Okay. We'll nice. be back in 24 hours. Okay. Well, no, the two of us between Drown and I, actually in Arlen. Arlen, what level are you? You're. Uh, you're, I He's just, fourth. I just, uh, yeah, I'm fourth. Uh, I actually turned fifth last last adventure, but I didn't level yet. So, okay. Um, so, yeah. so at that time, we'll be able to, between the three of us, we'll be able to remove the other three curses. 
Okay, what? that spell magic does not remove a curse. No, but I have the spell in my spell book. I just got to go back and get the book. So that's fine. Okay, very good. So we okay. will follow the path of blue sand down into the dungeon. Okay, very you? good. Then you're going to you're going down in the dwarf tower dungeon first level, yep. right? And you go into a cavey place that uh, that turns east and then turns south. You go past that secret door that had the figurines of wondrous power, mm -hmm. and you see there is a trail of blue sand, very faint on the floor. And we go south into the great big room that had the pedestal that used to have a nice gem. And then, okay, let's have some uh, marching order. Uh, the battle order right now is uh, Lance and Chrome up front with Levi and myself in second position, Drawn and our new friend Lorath and Arlen holding the rear. Okay, and what are we using for light? Uh, we have continual light stones. We have three of those currently. Okay, very good. All right, so you smell something odd and fetid. You don't like the smell, but you don't know what it is. And we continue south following the trail of sand to a big door to the south. You open that door, and you, you come to the odd room that has those two magnificent chests of... Where the, where the of a hundred thousand gold coins apiece, but they were fake. They were right. fa they right. were fake. Yes. That's all right. Uh, and then, uh, oh, go ahead. I was just asking. Then we have a door to the south, and we have the the uh, other door to the uh, west. Yes, you take the door to the west. Okay. That's and where you the come in. Yes, yes. You come into a big room that's that's thirty yards east and west. And you've been in this room before, yep. and seventy yards north and south, with an exit uh, in the uh, in the west wall. You take that, and then you go uh, thirty yards down a corridor to a door to the south. You take the door to the south, takes you to another weird room, and another door to the south, and you take the door to the south, and then your adventure begins. All right, so hang on. How much experience do we get? For <laughs> just what for just what you did, probably oh. probably four hundred apiece. Oh, okay. Well that's that's good enough. It's it's better than nothing. So we're looking at level. after we went through the door to the south, uh, did that lead us to an additional corridor or was it just uh, another small room? You know what that that leads you to a set of a double set of stairs going down. Stairs down. And the sand goes down the stairs? Yes. Actually, not, you, as you inspect that, you're kind of weirded out. There's a, there's a double pair of parallel stairs. One set of stairs is made of black marble, and that has sand on it. The other set of stairs is made of white marble, and that is pristine without sand. Um, taking a look, so is it a, a, approximately a 20-foot wide passage with two staircases? Or one no, it's, it's more like 20 yards wide. 20 yards. With each staircase being 10 yards wide. Roger that. Uh, but they are connected, correct? They are not separated by a center wall. They are not separated by a center wall. Excellent question, Andrew. Okay. And how far down does it go to send? No, your lights do not show it. So it's further than our 30-foot uh, diameter. Yes. Okay. I have an extra continual light stone we can throw if we wish to explore. Let's toss it. I'll hand it to somebody who looks stronger than me, probably Krom, I would think. I oh, Krom. Very strong and powerful that boy is. Here, throw this as far as you can. Naturally. I'll throw it that far. What do I see? <laughs> All right. It goes down the stairs. There's at least 100 yards of stairs. And then you see two great big double doors at the bottom of the stairs. And my good friend, Drawn, is going to show us a picture of a door with a latch with rope around it. Maybe. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, it worked in commercial. Yeah, you got to give me a little more lead time than that. 
<laughs> you are still muted. Yeah. Uh, how about now? Nope, you're nope. still muted. And now? There we okay, go. Okay, now we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. So, can you please show that uh, door with the rope lock? Yeah. Uh, n next time, you got to give me a little more lead time, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, while we're uh, while we're doing that, um, did somebody want to talk up uh, the latest and greatest of what they have coming out? A commercial. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, Levi, tell us what you're working on, man. Well, uh, let's see. I, I am working on my first lit RPG. Uh, that'll be sometime early Q1. And, uh, of course, I'm working on a next sci-fi and uh, next thriller, which will also come out in Q1. So, yeah. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that's coming out. And you're killing it in Germany as we speak, right? I am surprisingly... Uh, I'm, I'm letting a fire under my translator's butt to try to get more of my stuff out. So it, it, it's uh, I never expected. So. Very good. Cool. Very good. Cool. Cool. David Hasselhoff of Germany. He is, he is, the, he is the thriller <laughs> David Hasselhoff of Germany. We shall see. We shall see. Cool. All right, Walt, back to you, man. Hold on. Before we do that, I understand James was going to tell us about the one and only time he ever argued with Gary Gygax. <laughs> okay. Yeah, tell us. <laughs> so I was, I was working on Deities and Demigods, which is the big hardbound book, and uh, it was a big deal for me because it was a, a ton of work way before the Internet, so I had to actually go to libraries and do research. And so... The one with Cthulhu. The one with Cthulhu and <laughs> Mel Melanie Bonet, yes. Okay. And so, so I sent the first batch of, of Viking gods to Gary. And Gary said he loved every single bit of it, really loved the history of it, but there was no way in hell that he was going to allow Odin to have 1,000 hit points. And and I, I, as soon as I got that letter, I called him up immediately. And I said, Gary, isn't it logical that Odin of all the Viking gods would have a thousand hit points and all the rest of them would have less hit points? And he gave me this whole great big interplanar spiel about the fact that they don't die when they're on the prime material plane. Their, their body, their avatars die, but their spirit goes right back to Valhalla where they reform again. And he said, absolutely not. The most you can give him is 400 hit points. And so I bet I argued with him over an hour on it. But you don't really do well when you argue against Gary Gygax. <laughs> so I was I was outvoted by one because he's the boss and I had to do what he says. But I've always kind of wanted my head gods to have a thousand hit points, but it never happened. Hmm. With a thousand hit points, would they still be killed by a Gamma World death machine? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they would be too, turned to rubber. Too soon. Get naked and afraid. That is another funny story. Okay, so Roger Moore was the uh, the the head uh, editor of Dragon Magazine, and he loved Gamma World. So one day, on a weekend, he got all the TSR editors and designers together, and he said, "Pick any two gods you guys want." And each one of you has your own pair of gods, and you're going to go up against this single Gamma World death machine. So 20 gods with 20 godlike powers went up against the Gamma World death machine, and the Gamma World death machine drove away at the end of the battle. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. That's awesome. Hey, that death machine, you don't mess yeah. with it. You don't mess with it. It's it's a usually powerful. You only mess with it once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. There are some mutations that will allow you to, to stop it, but it's it's very hard to do. It's very got a cool. ton of attacks and a ton of weird powers. and It was just a brilliant creation of one of those designers. <laughs> All right, James, now we're looking at your door. And oh yes, okay. It. We are looking at your door. I don't see it. Do I have to refresh? Uh, oh, no, go no. to that. Go to that tab, and then you'll uh, you'll when it drops down for you, you'll see the uh, you'll see the uh, the little red players tab. Click that, and it should okay. bring you to the right place. Thank you very much. Loading, load. Okay, there it is. Look at that. Okay, it's magnificent, isn't it? So yeah. 
there this the doors are 20 yards tall and 20 yards wide it's a double portal mm-hmm. and the high the hieroglyphics yes andrew and yes john you can read the hieroglyphics nice and and you know what uh, scorpio you got to start learning hieroglyphics uh, we we started uh, training with Wordna on the um, our off time, but it says okay. it takes uh, several several weeks to learn that. Oh, I think I'll see more like six months, but that's okay. I was hoping well, you didn't remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, so, the, the sayings on that door say uh, it, that it's a Sonics menu. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? No, it it talks about the curse of the Sun Pharaoh, and if you open these doors, you'll be cursed by the Sun Pharaoh. But the ropes are the interesting thing. The ropes are sparking blue. So blue sparks travel up and down those ropes, obviously indicating some kind of horrific magic. Mm. So there you go. And the sand, there's a big pile of the blue sand in front of the door. But does it go through that crack? It definitely goes through the crack. So stand back and someone prepare me a drink. I will examine the magic. <laughs> and I'll make a spellcraft check. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, he's Laura at the Pompous. Okay, let us uh, role play. How are you doing it, my friend? I'm going to inspect the rope. So I'll, I'll bend down next to it. I'm not actually touching it, but I am setting it to look at the enchantment itself and see if anything about the magic uh, sparks me. You know, what school was it? And what do I think it will do precisely when opened? Yeah, yeah, take man. that, James. We brought we brought a pro today. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you don't get much. It's it smells electric, and uh, you're pretty positive there's a curse running there somewhere because that's what the door said. It should be safe for anyone but me to touch. <laughs> <laughs> Do we think that uh, the sun god is Ra? No, no, this this isn't the sun god. This is the sun pharaoh. Sun pharaoh. We're under that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then Walt, ready your picture of Anubis. Alright, that I can do. Um, Don't so- show it to him yet though. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to go whenever you are. Thank uh, you very much. That, that third image of the uh, the box, the stone box. Yes, uh, yes. I don't know how you sent it, but um, my uh, I, it doesn't like it. So okay, no problem. We'll just we'll just uh, describe it instead of show it. Yes, and I can uh, I can I, I can fake a good game. Okay, very good. So anyway, there you go. Ropes, magical, fierce, cursed, electric. What do you want to do? We could use our rope without touching it. Drop it through the slot, tie it off, and open it where we don't actually touch it. So don't you, being the clever cavalier that you are, don't you think that the ropes being tied to those two doors will stop you from pulling it open? I work out. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I will use my mighty strength gifted to me by, the, by Anubis himself and, and eat the door open. If you'd like to try that, that's fine. Is that what you're going to do? Uh, anybody have better ideas before before I turn to an uh, ant again or something? Well, two things. Uh, Verna, you got anything? We have two options. We have uh, spell capability. I have the ability to use the spell to crack the door. If we choose, we want to do that. Option B is we can also fry the spell by dispelling it. So we have those two options. One is knock, which is a spell which allows us to open enchanted doors. That doesn't mean we won't take the effects of the curse, but I am magic resistant, so the answer is maybe yes, maybe no. And then option B is we can actually try and fry the curse with dispelling it. Dispel is probably the safer option. It's our most expensive option, but we can do that. Let's fry it. All right. Um, Jim, without touching it, uh, my distance, my range is 10. And I'll natural ultras petros dothreo viende. And I will dispel magic on the door. Okay, so how far away are you, my friend? 10 feet. 10 feet. And and where is everybody else? Behind him. Like 60 feet back. I'd like to <laughs> remind everyone that I'm always in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All um, right, so. I'm going to be protecting the wizard with my shield. Oh, what a nice guy you are. That means, of course, that while he's 10 feet away, you're 9 feet away. 
Not necessarily. Okay. How do you protect him without being in front of him? Uh, I stand to his side and have the, the shield by us in front of us. Right on. Yeah, okay. let me take it. If I take it, I take it. I'm sorry. What was that word now? Uh, he doesn't have to stand in front of me. He can stand to the side of me. If I take it, I take it. He wants to protect you, Weird now. I heard him. So you're ignoring that. We'll see what he does. What do you want to do, Chrome? I'm going to stand in front of him and protect him. Okay, okay very him, good. Him do All that right. with, without standing on the other side to offer my shield as well. My yeah, okay. honor it. You're a cavalier. That doesn't mean you're an idiot. <laughs> But it does make him look bad that I'm more brave than he is. Yes, it okay. does. <laughs> okay, that's very true, my good friend. A very good role playing, buddy. Yeah. So I'm friend. not needed. So I'm not needed now. I'll step. Crap. <laughs> oh, how did I not see that coming? What, yeah. what do we got, Jim? Well, I, I, I'm sorry. I still can't figure out. Kermethis, are you in front of him or not? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, very good. So. Um, the spell works wonderfully. A gigantic bolt of lightning streaks out from the ropes and strikes our good friend Prometheus. Prometheus, please make a magic saving throw. A magic saving throw? Yes. Okay. My spells? Yes. Sure. D20? I make, I make it. You, you make it. Oh. Ah. So, how much Hang experience do I get? You get no experience for that, but you only take 10 points of damage instead of 20 points of damage. Okay. Well, at least it proves I'm braver than the Cavalier. <laughs> Ouch. Well, I yeah. know the bulk of my hit points, too, by the way. So, nicely done. Yeah. Okay. And, and that rope... Uh, now no longer glows with blue sparks. That can't be good. No, that is good. You know, that means the curse has been, been discharged. Well, that's probably good. That's an assumption well, on Loroth the Pompous's part. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's assumption. It's very fitting. I'm saying it can't be good because now we can just clearly walk through, and this is where we usually get into trouble. Oh, uh, there we go. Yes. Do we? Let's look up, down, and all around and see if we see anything else. Five yeah, twenty-five, okay, two hundreds. It's, it's a bit late for that, but okay. <laughs> Before we walk through the door. You if see, any of the clerics want to toss a healing my way, that'd be great. How many points did you lose? Ten. I happen to have a vial of healing potion that will give you back ten. Okay. Wow. You, save that you, for it. We need you, really, you really shouldn't have used that, but fine. <laughs> right. We want to save that until we exhaust our spells, Lance. Nope. Too late. He used it. Thank yep. You. Too late. You're back to full, buddy. Thank you, sir. Whee. Okay. Um, um, um. Uh, why, by the way, where did you put that other empty vial, Scorpio? Um, I left it at the church, at the Temple of Anubis. Okay, very good. From Anubis it came, from Anubis it returned. There we go. Okay, now. So, yeah, you looked up and down and around. You see these murals, these murals of, of the sun pharaoh doing magical things, saving his people from drought and from uh, lack of crops. And on the ceiling, you see the sun pharaoh in a great big boat that he's standing in the prow and uh, Ra is standing in the stern controlling the boat and they're floating through the stars. Wait, this isn't the Tracy Hickman module, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, pharaoh, awesome. That would be he's, bad. He's a, he's, a, he's a very good designer, but I wouldn't do anything, Tracy Hickman. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember is that that module started at like 18th level or something. Yeah, really. Yeah, it was brutal. I think I okay. died in the first corridor. <laughs> <laughs> never, never good. Okay, so we got these doors. Are we opening them? Yeah, Lance, can you pop the doors? I shall. Um, okay. do, it, do it from uh, open. Open the white staircase door, please. So shall it be. Okay, very good. I've got that in control. Okay. All right, as you, uh, as you open the portal, you see a double set of stairs again. Whoa. The two stairs extend deep into the earth. The right set of stairs is made of red marble. 
The left set of stairs is made of black marble. Along the walls on either side are fantastic images of some type of wizard fighting creatures of the desert from dragons to sphinxes. And the the red set of stairs has the blue sand on it. So uh, let me get some clarity. Does the red set of stand, sand continue from what was the, sorry, the red set of stairs continue from what was the black stairs? Or, yes, yes, okay. yes. And so now, whereas we have come down white stairs next to the sand, now we're looking at a black staircase that doesn't have sand. Black or red marble, yes. Correct. The thief, the thief calls a halt and asks to do a listen check. Don't hear a thing, buddy. Okay. Don't hear a thing, buddy. Um, what is the distance that we can see? You can see 30 yards. What is the distance that I can see? Oh, you bad guy. You you can see all the way to the bottom where you see a portal with a blue haze around it. And how far is that distance, please? Nah, it looks to be like 250 feet. Uh, the same color marble all the way down? Yes. Roger that. Baby Yoda approves. 250. Okay. There goes JR getting us, trying to get a suit again. He's I got know. the shirt on. It's like the <laughs> first. He's okay. He bought it. My wife just bought me this shirt. It's nice, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, uh, you did listen and heard nothing? Nothing. Nothing. Let's... Does anybody have any pets they want to send down to see if it triggers anything? I did. <laughs> Any rats? <laughs> you uh, you guys can definitely keep a hamster or a gerbil, but uh, the only pet of value is not going down. Although he did make me buy a cat, so now we have a kitten at home. So that's new. Yeah, okay. great. We're gonna that, let that might be that might be destroyed if I do the wrong thing. <laughs> that's true. I heard that. So okay. um, so the portal. We're gonna approach the portal, right? Yep. Okay, very good. So you're walking down the stairs, walking down the stairs, walking down the stairs. Okay. Down the stairs. You come upon, you come to the bottom of the stairs. Your lights reveal a huge chamber, far too big for your modest lights to search all the way out. You haven't walked in the chamber yet. First, you notice a blue glow at the entrance of the chamber. You have never seen such a thing before. There is nothing to do but test it. Does the blue haze remind us at all of the fireflies uh, and the wall that brought us into the crypt where we found the, the tome of the Book of Dead? Great question. No. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, Spellcraft, I'm going to uh, motion to Laura to have him uh, come up in order and take a look with me as we examine the blue haze. Oh, boy. Give me a six-sided die and... And on a one, you're unhappy. Uh, I'm a three, and he's yeah. a two. Lorath is a two. Moderately unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, it's it's some kind of trap, for sure. Trap. Does it uh, um, consume the circumference of the doorframe? Yes, it does. That's not good. Um, Chrome, uh, with traps, any thoughts on this? Hmm. Is it a magical trap or a physical trap? You don't know, buddy. Can I examine? Okay, roll percentile dice. Tell me what you get. Damn it. I'm convinced it's not even a trap by rolling a 98. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's clearly a hooker. Yeah, or, or the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. Oh. So, Wal Walt, my good friend, would you please change our image to Anubis? <clears throat> that can't be good. Be on that right now. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, how about throwing a little sand against it? Okay, the sand goes through. The sand goes through. Um, let's try rolling a couple things. Uh, we'll start with a ball bearing. Okay. Let, James, let me know uh, when you want to show that. No, that's you can show it right now. It's perfect. It's that looks great. I'm very happy. And as speaking of happy, Scorpio is delighted to see a temple image of Anubis. Where is this? It's it's beyond the blue haze. Got it. 
Okay. Maybe it's almost calling to him like he just wants to go through the trap. So who did, who did, who did the metal ball bearing? That was me. Okay. So you get uh, four points of damage to your chest from some kind of magic missile effect. Uh, can I magic resistance that? No, you can't, my good friend. Good for me. And the, and the blue haze goes away. Okay. Hmm. So roll another ball bearing. I'll roll it this time. I'll roll a ball bearing. Okay, nothing. Do we see it go through to the other side, or does it disappear? It goes through the doorway, and it's like laying there on the floor in front of the statue of Anubis. Do we have a sense now by looking how big this room is? It's huge. You, your lights don't don't touch any wall. Do I get any feeling of anything from Anubis? Uh, there in front of you is a huge carving of a kneeling jackal. The jackal statue is done in some type of gemstone. You suspect lapis luzi. Okay. One of you is able to read. So one of you. Uh, let's see who can read it. So Dron can read it and uh, Wurdna can read it. Can read... Uh, pedestal. Okay, you can read the pedestal. It speaks of a terrible curse for bothering the sleep of the most awesome sun pharaoh, ruler of the two halves of the world. This is just basically uh, ancient Aussie rules stuff. <laughs> and this is where the sand trail leads to. This uh, it lava. goes. It goes past the pedestal. It goes past it. Yep. Okay. So can we pursue protection now? from evil on myself? Oh, that's a good spell. Good going. So, Lance, why don't you lead us into the room? So shall it be. As you walk about the chamber, the walls are covered in colorful, the colorful life of the sun pharaoh. There are images of him helping his people. He uses magic to fight the enemies of the empire. His magic is also used in planting and harvesting and controlling the weather. You get the feeling you are being watched. The watcher makes the back of your hairs um, stand on end and uh, seems to want to do harm to you. When you look up at the ceiling, you see stars and a huge black ship like the one you saw in the other corridor. And again, the sun fair was at the prow and Ra is at the back. Your nose is assaulted by several different types of spices that make it very hard to breathe this air. Where does the sand trail lead? Past the, past the Anubis statue. Can I make an alchemy check to determine if it's something like frankincense, myrrh, or any of the standard embalming spices? Yeah, frankincense and myrrh is exactly what it is. Okay. All right. We've got a big mummy ahead of us. <laughs> any so track? I, any, I will any, go ahead. I will touch my silver onk uh, pendant and, and say a, a prayer for the soul of the uh, of the king pharaoh. Okay, and and the statue whispers to you that you really should leave before you die. <laughs> I will forward it is. I I really love how polite the statue is whispering. I mean. <laughs> There's a benefit there. All right, let's, let's move uh, double time and pass and, and okay. follow the trail. You, you're moving past? Yep. Okay, you see two different things. You see this weird pile of treasure and... What's weird about it? Well, I'll tell you in just a second because you see D as well and so I have to tell you what D is. Okay, and you see a very strange image of a beautiful woman floating in the air. Ha cha! And the, the the sand goes past the treasure. Don't touch the treasure. It's yep. an offering to the to Ra. It's his funeral goods. Disturbing it would be bad. You got to say that in your own voice. Nobody touch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you see, in, in the treasure you see 20 white bundles. There are several man-sized urns with large cork lids. 
Uh, there are other things like a, a golden chariot. And that's what you see. Are the jars canopic jars? No, they're way too big for that. Got it. Great question, though. Uh, you said man-sized jars. Yeah. All right, let's move past unless anyone wants to mess with something. Okay, are we messing with are we messing with D or just moving, following the trail of sand? Let's follow the trail. Okay, that takes us to G. You just missed all sorts of good stuff. G for ginger. Yeah. Okay, where are you, G? I preferred Marianne. <laughs> I did. I did too, as a matter of fact. Ginger was a friend of my dad's. <laughs> of course, your dad knows everybody. <laughs> no, she's pretty cool, actually. They met on a plane. All right, this is G. Okay, you see. I don't know if we can do this. Let me see if I can do this. Can you tell what that is, guys? Yeah. Picture of like a pharaoh? It's a picture of a pharaoh. You see this ghostly image floating in the air, and behind him is another portal, and that's where the sand goes. Floating in the air. Behind him is another portal. Not a door, but a portal. Portal, yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about what the portal looks like. It's just a big open doorway. Oh, it is a doorway. Um, Am I getting any sense from the floating uh, apparition of the pharaoh? Uh, roll me a six-sided die. On a one, two, or a three, you're extremely happy. James, while he's doing that, can you just hold that up to the camera one more time now that I got your yeah. image a little bigger on my side? Of course I can, my very good friend. <laughs> oh, God. Every time he says very good friend, I feel like I'm going to get shot in the knee with an arrow. Oh, that is real. that's really cool. Isn't oh, it nice? nice? Or a magic missile in our case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. I, got a, I got a one. The, oh, okay. Is it happy for you or happy for me? Yeah. No, it's ha happy for you. You know that there are two mummy guards behind that ghostly phantom that will attack the second you walk into or past the phantom. Let's take a moment to go ahead and do our ad for Chris Fox's uh, latest offering. All right. Great idea. Chris, why don't well, you talk about your project? I'll even uh, show my, my beard for this um, because I just received something like an hour ago uh, that I've been wanting to brag about. So let me reconnect and show video. So while he's doing... Go ahead. I've always been working on a role-playing game since they were kids. Uh -huh. Well, I've been working on the Magitech Chronicles for wow. about 30 years. And the book just Maybe showed up vi like video wasn't hours the best ago. Thing to do. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I forget this is a podcast. So, no, 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 no. We can see it. It's great. Yeah. Um, but the description of the game, the game is epic space fantasy. So you're looking at dragons tearing apart starships. It's a fistful wow. of dice system. So if you are familiar with uh, World of Darkness or Shadowrun or, you know, West End Games Star Wars, the system is somewhat similar to those. Um, fairly open-ended uh, character classes. Um, Lots of starships, cyberware, dragons, magic, that sort of thing. Yeah, and I know that everybody who played it at the, the early uh, test play at Archer's Rest, like, had a blast. I think you guys played till midnight, 3 o'clock in the morning, or in your suite? Yeah, we just kept going until almost the crack of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so how does one buy this product? Uh, currently, it's available at Drive -through RPG. So and if we'll you go to drive-thruRPG.net, the... Um, the PDF is available right now. The paperback I just received is the proof. So that won't be approved until ah, probably next week. So I would say Wednesday. And then you'll be able to pick up the uh, hardback or the paperback uh, of the game as well. Um, nice. It's also available on World Anvil in a free format. So if you just want to use it like a system resource document, go to worldanvil.com, uh, look for the Magitech Chronicles, and you can uh, make a character, play the game without having to spend a dime. Ooh, oh. good, uh, good idea. Good marketing idea. And the art on this project, I've just been watching it uh, on his Instagram and I've seen it through the whole thing. The art on this project is is um, AAA video game like level. Sometimes sometimes RPG art can be a little wacky. Like this is a beautiful thing that you really want to have. The audience should be seeing a graphic that we're not seeing. So uh, you know where to find Chris Fox. Uh, he makes great stuff. And if you want like a game that I I feel it's pretty easy for people to get into and have a lot of fun with. Uh, this is it, man. 
I just grabbed actually, the quick start rules, which are available for signing up for Chris's mailing list, I think. And he has a YouTube channel where he goes through the game and how to get started. Uh, and we'll share the YouTube channel, the the link to the books that this is based off of in the RPG, both on the old school or sci-fi writers playing old school D&D uh, Facebook page and group. So if you want to hang out, we'll, we'll share that all with you. All right. So, Funny story, Nick. When uh, when I started the fan club for for the Galaxy's Edge, I had just finished listening to uh, Chris Fox's uh, author advice book, and he said, "Stop hanging out with other authors and hang out with your readers." And yeah. I said, "Huh?" <laughs> and, and I was digging your books. So I was like, "Man, I got to start that." Then that's yep. how it. That's how I got started. It's all Chris Fox's fault. So if it goes belly up, blame him. <laughs> <laughs> readers over writers. Okay, so back to the game. What we're looking at now is a glowing image of a sun pharaoh. And we've been given the inclination that there are two mummies that will come after us. Yes. Yeah. So the thing I would ask to our, our players are like, are we here as tour guides? Or are we going to whale on stuff and get some loot? Because we need to make some money. I would, um, <laughs> I would like to take uh, two of, um, or yeah, one of my vials of holy water uh, consecrated by Anubis himself and uh, coat my blade. Coat, coat my kopesh. You know... I've been playing this game for 45 years. No one has ever thought to do that. Hopefully so, it doesn't blow up in my face. <laughs> no. Achievement you're, you're unlocked. Good. I guess that's the question. So we have three different groups that ask us to go track down the disturbance and figure out what's going on. We have reached the going on. We're either going to go past this guy and brawl with his two people to keep going after the thorn, or we want to... Uh, see no evil, touch no evil, etc. I think we're about to get in a fight. Yeah. James, you were going to reveal something? Um, you're going to do a plus five on your sword damage there, Scorpio. Outstanding. I'm just on undead, though. But this whole place is filled with undead, so you're going to have lots of fun. Why don't you uh, pass around some of that holy water to some of our other uh, bladesmen? Uh, well, I will. So instead of the holy water, I'll go through and I'll bless everybody's weapons. Uh, Ooh, ex- good. That's a plus one for everybody, right? Except for the uh, except for the dancing sword, because I don't know if it, it will he allow. Will the dancing sword allow me to do that? Of course, he loves you. Uh, oh, well, I love fans. Um, so yeah, I'll bless the dancing sword. You know, hasta lasagna. Don't get any on you. And then, uh, uh, you know, once everybody's weapons are blessed. Um, uh, yeah, I'll get ready and uh, stand back with some peeps. Okay, so you guys have to remember now, all your weapons are plus one to hit and do damage. Yes. Got it. So okay. the trail of sand goes past the pharaoh. Affirmative. But past the pharaoh are two mummies. Affirmative. All right. Let's here, move. here is the female apparition. The, it's behind you. It's to the east of the pile of treasure that you ignored. Okay. Uh, so if we engage these mummies, they, they hate fire. Any fire-based attacks will probably do additional damage to them. That, of course, is a supposition on your part. Let me, tell you, let me tell you an ugly little story. Gary had a whole Egyptian level, and it was filled with mummies. And we started burning them and throwing oil on them, and Gary grew tired of that. <laughs> so... Gary started wrapping his mummies in asbestos wraps. <laughs> what did that do to their poor lungs? They, they yeah, nothing. They laughed at our <laughs> fire and they beat us up and gave us mummy rot. So just, I'm not saying that these mummies are wrapped in asbestos, but I wouldn't dream of making the mistake Gary made. I will tell Fever to come to life. <laughs> okay, he does. He we says, will, you, so, will, uh, you will not believe the gems that are down here. We are going to have so much fun. We are, buddy. So, James, a quick question. So, I've, I've got this amulet. Uh, I've got this gem of fire ignition embedded into an amulet that I'm wearing. Yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. So, if I'm using the quarterstaff, do I see you know, Do I see any sparks on contact or anything else? Does it work through the quarter do, stuff, or is it just a hand? Do you know how to use the amulet? The answer is I'm no. I'm just wearing it. You're just wearing it. That's all you're doing. Yeah. You might want to pay a sage 400 gold to find out how to use it. 
I am a sage. I will take your 400 gold. <laughs> you, you are not, not right. a sage. <laughs> you can't cheat your buddies. All right, I say we uh, we are ready. Um, everybody got their spells ready? Yeah, we're loaded. Let's yeah, I got, I've got my shield and Kofesh. No. Kofesh. 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 Right. Like I am. Wait, aren't, are uh, ready, aren't mummies afraid of cats? <laughs> that's a that's a different kind of mummy. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, James. We proceed forward in battle. Okay, very good. So you, uh, and uh, this is going to be unusual, but unfortunately for you guys, I've written that you're surprised by the sight of the two mummies. So you are. But how could we? We've been warned. I mm-hmm. know. I know. It's not logical, but that's just what it is. <laughs> All right. So we're going to go with it. So we expect uh, yeah. you to make it up to us and experience. Okay. Lorath, you get hit. You get hit for... Where is it? Oh, well, that's a lot of damage, Lorath. <laughs> You're going to be unhappy. You get hit for seven points of damage, and you have to make a poison save for mummy rot. Okay. I should have calculated my poison save. I want to say that's a 12 or less. Did you calculate your Thacko, my friend? Uh, I did not. I'm doing that now. I'll be I mean, asking. Not that I'm going to be swinging a dagger anytime soon. I, I, I understand. I understand. And here's so, a poison save. Uh, 14. How much is this poison save? For a 14, and this Thacko is a 19. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. I'm here all week. Try the veal. It's, it's, it's great to have a second referee in the game. Yikes. Really causes no problem at all, does it, Andrew? I live to serve. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, so did you make the save, buddy? Uh, looks like I did. I went under it, right? Yes. So I rolled a 10 did. and I had a 14, so I made okay, it. Okay, so... You don't take any damage from the mummy rot this turn. So that takes us to... Tron. Um. Yeah. Try these. These guys are just. These aren't the. Uh, the. Could you describe these mummies, James? Yes, I can. Six foot tall, um, humanoids wrapped in in what appears to be some kind of fibrous wrapping. Uh oh. And uh, yeah, I know. If uh, Andrew uses his uh, his uh, uh, metallic uh, abilities, he might be able to tell what it is. But he's not using that right now. And uh, and um, but they both have huge turquoise rings on their fingers. Hmm, interesting. I am going to produce flame on uh, this this one right here. Okay, very good. And then uh, so I cast that, and that will give me some fire. Yeah. And he'll be on fire until he puts it out. So I really yeah. don't. I really don't see them. I mean, walk like an Egyptian. I can kind of get, but I, I don't think them going to be stop dropping and rolling anytime soon. Okay, so um, you you pour the fire over his body, and it doesn't work like it normally does with that spell, and it doesn't seem to harm him at all or even turn him black. Um, yeah, that's that's my story. I'm sticking with it. Yes, Levi. All right, well, I'm going to take my quarterstaff and take a swing at the nearest... Levi, this is a non-magical quarterstaff, right? Because the black pudding ate your other one? No. Uh, isn't this the quarterstaff he no, got from uh, St. Cuthbert? It... Yeah, yep. this is no. Cuthbert quarterstaff. Uh, well, oh, that's right. He did give him a... But I thought you used that on the black pudding. You didn't, Levi? He did, uh, and then Wordna think... gave him one. No, I kept mine. Yeah. He borrowed right. mine for a while. This is a normal quarterstaff. So it bounces. Doesn't it have uh, holy water on it? Oh, holy water. And it's blessed. Dog on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, that causes complications for me. Lorath the, the Pompous, my man. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. All right, so roll them bones, buddy. Yeah, unfortunately, I only hit. I only got a five. You know, you roll lots of fives. You, you ever consider retiring that die? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about it. The great cavalier of Anubis. I am swinging my co Pesh. Copish. Copish. Don't forget you got a plus one all the time. 
26 because I also have the uh, weapon of choice in um, wow. nice. strength Very and constitution. Nice. Do your damage. All right, that is. Is this a, a small, medium, or a large creature? This is a medium. All right, so 2D. Good question, my friend. All right. Six it's it's only it's only a two and a half hour show. <laughs> <laughs> that was epic. Please take a character point for that, James. <laughs> I got a nineteen. Nineteen. Wow, that's a lot of damage. <clears throat> that makes me uncomfortable. Wow, look at that. <laughs> 19. Okay, that takes us to the Marvelous Wizard. I'll point the old gun finger near, 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 and fire off three magic missiles at it. <laughs> Do you? Oh, three magic missiles. That's because you're a high level guy. That's okay, and they all roll the damage. It's um, a four sided nine. die plus one. Correct. Total of nine. Ooh, ni nice going. Okay, and you have to know, um, Lauren. That if you foolishly don't tell me the the creature that you're going to hit with your attack, I automatically use the freshest creature for the damage. That's kind of like rotating me? stock on a shelf, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Prometheus the Bold. Uh, I'm going to wail on the one that uh, JR damaged. With okay. My sword, which is plus four versus undead. I know. I know. My Thacko is uh, ch 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 15 with that sword. So that brings it down to 11. The first roll is a uh, nine to hit AC zero. Yeah, that's a miss. An 11 to hit AC zero. Okay. And a 10 to hit AC zero. So you got one hit. Do the damage. Okay. I do a D8. And that'll be one damage. That's amazing. Plus two, two d six fire. Don't forget the uh, one point from the bless. Yes, uh, two, three. Okay. Well, then if I get one point from the bless, I might have got a hit on the other two. Let's assume you didn't. Okay. Um, two mm -hmm. d six fire damage. Yes. Uh, I think we're going to do a grand total of eleven points of damage. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, wait. No, plus four, each plus four to the damage. So we're going to do uh, 19 damage. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> that takes us to the marvelous Arlen. I'll, well, I'll pick the same target as Prometheus and swing my mace. Okay, very good. Blessed. Yeah. So rolling a real die this time. It's a 19 plus one from the club plus one from the bless is a 21. That's nice. Do your damage. It's a D6 for a club plus one uh, plus the bless for damage. All right. Takes us to Lorath the Pompous. <laughs> Lorath will fish out a scroll of fireball from his pack and read it. Uh, I'm going to try and target it in such a way as it'll hit both of the mummies and none of my friends. Oh boy, Lorath, you know, these, this is complicated geometry you're doing right here. <laughs> I hope I don't screw it up. So right. I'm thinking like there's the 20 foot radius, so probably like here. Ooh. So using it more okay. like a grenade, that's badass. We're going to, yeah. we're going to start, we're going to start with a six sided die, and if you roll a six, most of the party will be very unhappy with you. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. So maybe only one person's unhappy. <laughs> so you rolled a four? Yep. Okay. So how much damage you do for, with your fireball? Uh, what level was the scroll written at? It'd have to be either nine or ninth or tenth. Oh, it was the score. It it's the scroll. So it's sixty-six. But but don't bother, my friend. The fireball explodes and does nothing to these asbestos-coated mummies. Right. We've seen. But that, they've already taken hmm. fire damage from other sources. Actually, they haven't no, taken the, the damage. The they fire. were just. They just had fire thrust <laughs> on them. The fire's not damaging them. Correct. We saw. Yeah, that. But can we see the fire's not damaging them? It's not damaging them at all. Yeah, we see. So not one one of the mummies falls dead. The other mummy. 
Oh, I can only I can only hit the wizard. Let's see if I hit the wizard. Nope. It uh, it hits the cavalier and bounces. So it's time for initiative. Who's rolling it this week? Uh, let's go with uh, Verdna. You roll our initiative. Okay. Uh, with my next starting? No, it's just initiative. <laughs> Straight up. Four. A four. Well, I guess the mummy goes first. Uh, the mummy is like horrible. Okay, he misses everybody. Okay. Must be you guys' turn, starting with John. Oh, I love my turn. Uh, I'm going to whack him with my mace, uh, trying to uh, outdo the other uh, godly servants. Uh, one okay. who is shouting about undead stuff, and the other one who keeps yelling, Leroy Jenkins! <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he stopped doing that, actually. <laughs> uh, oh, that's Saint right. Cuthbert. He's St. Cuthbert. Like, hit him in the head. <laughs> uh, an 18. Oh, that's wonderful. So do your damage. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, eight points. Okay, that's oh, wait, terrific. Uh, 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 he gets uh, uh, a bonus because of the um, the blessed weapon and the and the holy water, right? Yes. How much of the bonus is that? It's a plus one. It's plus four for the holy water and plus one for the bless. All right, so twelve points. Okay, now make your save against mummy rot. I love making my save against mummy rot. Uh, where is my character? I have saving throws. It, it, this is not taking away from the show at all, I swear to God. Uh, it's, <laughs> Petri, poly, it's the uh, the first one, Polymorph, or is... This is the show. It's Poison. Oh, it's Poison? Um, yeah, poison I, death. yeah, I got a 16, so I'm all set. Okay, yes. very good. Thank you very much. Takes us to Levi. Levi. Uh, I just nice. rolled a 19. Levi, you connect. All right, Levi. So, uh, do your damage, buddy. All right, and uh, six. Six is great. Including my yeah, bonus. now please make a save against Mummy Rod. In, in, uh, twenty, of course. Oh wait, oh wait, wait, no, no, wait. A minute. Did wait, you wait, say wait. he rolled a twenty? Yeah. He did. No. Two in a row. Wow. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, well. Yeah, 20. that's good. Takes us to Scorpio, the Magnificent Cavalier. I am swinging with my Kopesh. All right. Uh, did I get it right this time, Walt? You got it right, my <laughs> good friend. It, buddy. All right. I got, uh, with all the bonuses, 25 to hit. Wow. He rolled the natural 20. No. Did, no, never mind. No, that's somebody else. Okay. And then Do your the damage. damage. 20. 20 points of damage. Okay, now make a save versus poison. He is um, a What is yeah. uh that's a D one hundred? D twenty. No, no, no that's a weird. <laughs> All, right. All right, okay, I know what that is. Uh, I know where that stat is. Save against poison, I gotta get an eleven. And I got a three, I got the poisons. Oh no. Okay, so you lose half your hit points in damage. Hmm. Where is, is that boy? A poison or a disease? Uh it's a little bit of both actually. Well excellent it's, question. It's gonna... It's going to concern ourselves. That's uh, that's that same stuff that uh, the drill sergeants used to yell at us for. Um, for <laughs> constantly change your socks so we didn't get the mummy rot in the feet. That's it. There we well, go. So, if, it, you're if it was poison, I passed it because I got the 11. If it was spells, which I rolled for, it was 14, I didn't. Yeah, okay. So you didn't. Okay. And you're down to 33 points. Hmm. Okay, it takes us to the marvelous wizard word now. He's looking a little anxious. Um, I am going to maintain until the end of the round. Okay. Did you did you coat your uh, uh, throwing stars in the in the holy water? I have not yet, nor have I thrown any throwing stars. Okay. And and how many vials of holy water did you bring there, Cavalier? Hello, Lance. I brought eight. Eight. Okay, you used up three of them when you coded everybody's weapons. Okay. That takes us to the gigantic, bold hero, Prometheus. Why are people having to save for mummy rot? Every time they hit them with their physical weapons, a great big cloud of reddish dust rose up from the body of the mummy 
and they breathed it in and it got on their skin. Okay. What if I stand back and hit him with a vial of acid? That'd be great, but of course there's a chance you might hit somebody who's already meleeed. <clears throat> okay, I'll melee. Two strikes this round. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get a, a 15 with that. Okay. And a, these, these, these rolls are horrible. And a 7. Okay, so the 15 does damage. How much? Let's do uh, a D8 plus 4 plus 2, 10, and then 2D6 fire damage, which you say is doing nothing. So we're going to do uh, seven, 17. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't try backstabbing them, Prometheus. Oh, my gosh. I forgot I was a thief. Okay. <laughs> well, that takes us to Arlen. Uh, same target. Uh, I'm attacking. Oh, Prometheus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a second, Arlen. Uh, please make a poison save there, Prometheus. I'm an elf. Yeah, great. Please make a poison save there, Prometheus. <laughs> I don't make it. Okay, very good. So Prometheus is down to 16 hit points. Oh. Do you ever notice that how, uh, you know, when we get attacked, we're his good friends, and when we get damaged, it's good? <laughs> <laughs> you ever notice that? Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Arlen the Bold. Uh, please, do what you want to do. I'm attacking Prometheus's mummy. Okay, very good. All right. And rolling a physical die. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, with the enchantment of Blessed, it's 17. Oh, that sounds good. Do your damage. Uh, eight points of damage. Oh, very well done. Please make a poison save. Poison save. I rolled a one. Well, that uh, that takes Oof. you down to uh, one. That takes you down to twelve hit points. Ow. Okay. And then we have the marvelous Lorath the Pompous. I will bravely run away. <laughs> 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 okay, that's perfectly fine. So now we got initiative again. I rolled a very popular two. Lorath, you're the other wizard in the party. Roll that puppy. Nope, no, he can't. He ran away. Oh, what are we rolling? A d6 or a d20? D20. Oh, d20. I rolled a one. <laughs> weren't you always rolling? Weren't you guys always rolling d20s? Yes. Okay, very good. The mummy right. goes first. You, the mummy goes first. I just love how that happens. Okay, he wants to attack. Oh, he, he can't. Okay, he ignores everybody and runs as fast as he can toward Lorath the Pompous. And at the beginning of next round, he will reach him and attack him and try to kill him. So since he's that turned his back on him, can I backstab him? You will be able to when it's your turn. Yes, my good friend. Okay. Drawn, it's your turn. Oh, I'm going to whack him. Okay, whack away. I love whacking away. 18. 18 is a marvelous. Do your damage. Uh, not as good that time. That one's 11. Okay, poison saving throw. I love poison saving throws. Uh, ooh, that's close. Uh, hold on. Uh, there is a poison saving throw. I made it by one. I'm all set. Okay, very good. Takes it to Levi the Incomparable. I got a 14 on my roll. Does that hit Thacko? Let's see. Well, let me see this. I think um, the Thacko is... Uh, Thacko hang on, hang on, hang on. The armor class is... is 7. That's a hit for you. Oh, yeah, I made it. Okay. Roll your damage. Yep. It's a four. Okay, poison save. Okay, poison save. Nineteen. Nicely oh, done. That is nicely done. That takes us to the marvelous cavalier. Marvelous cavalier. All right. Time I got down. I got a nineteen for the hit. Oh, nice. Um. And then a 19 for the damage. And do I need really? to roll? Really? Yeah, of course you need to roll a poison saving throw. I got 15, so I made it by one. Okay, Ooh. very good. Word of the wizard. I need to get those poison saves down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys are doing well. Um, well, if it's running, I'm going to let it run. And uh, I will uh, stay where I'm at. Okay, very good. Prometheus, you can now backstab this bad guy. 
All right, I do. I hit. Okay. Uh, let's see. So that's going to be D8 times two. Times three. Triple damage. Triple damage. So that's three, <laughs> but the plus four, 12, uh, 15. 15 points. Well done. Nice. Takes us to Arlen. I'm going to uh, cast Cure Light Wounds on myself. Okay, very good. That's 1d8 plus 1, please. All right. Uh, three. Okay, you're up to 15. Okay. And, of course, the incomparable Lorath the Pompous. So this thing is chasing me. Is it moving faster than I am? It's a mummy. It, it will catch up to you and try to kill you at the beginning of the next melee round. Well, I mean, like, is my move greater than it? Can I run away? You you haven't been able to figure that out. Uh, I'll keep trying to run away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my I have nine hit points, no armor, and none of my most powerful spell did nothing to it. Okay. So you're just going to keep running? You're going to hide behind something? What are you going to do? You should hi totally hide behind the, the uh, cavalier. Uh, 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 uh. Drawn should not be saying anything, young man. Ooh, a metagaming siphon. Oh, a dear. metagaming mistake of the worst kind. <laughs> That's why I okay. need to be quiet, too. Yeah. So, Lorath, what would you decide to do? Uh, looking for a pillar, maybe back the way we came, like trying to get out. You, okay, you're going to grow through the blue mist? I thought the blue mist. Oh, that's right. We entered the blue mist against the portal. So, yeah, I will go back through the blue mist. Okay, very good. Has the blue mist reformed? Yes, of course it did. Uh oh. Ruh -ruh. And I did I did six points of damage to Lorath. You're down to three, my good friend. Yep. And, of course, the mummy crashes to the ground and turns to dust. All that's left is this marvelous uh, turn. Yeah, turquoise or was it tourmaline? No, it's turquoise. Uh, turquoise ring worth three thousand gold pieces. They is, there any, they is, there, is there anything left to bless for Anubis? No. Each each of them had a ring. So each mummy each had, of them a had a ring. ring right? Each had a ring. So that's two three thousand gold piece turquoise rings. Can anybody help with healing the party? Because I took a hit. <laughs> well, first off, hold on real quick. It, did the blue mist dis dissolve once he went through? Yes. So can he come back to this side without taking damage? Yes. So I would suggest that. Come back to us, Lorath the Pompous. We will protect you. Reju okay, uh, so I'll step back through when I sh I'm sure it's safe. Okay, very good. <laughs> it's safe. All right. So we got uh, Lorath has got three hit points left. Arlene has 15 hit points left, um, and uh, Prometheus has 16 hit points. Everybody else is pretty much okay. So, can anybody uh, can do the little wiggle your fingers and heal healing stuff? No, just the clerics. I was talking to the party, asking them to heal me. <laughs> we also have that silver jar of healing salve. Okay, is that the you, one that killed poor keep, James? You keep bringing it up, <laughs> Nick. He He's afraid to check it out because he's positive that when he does, it's going to hurt him. Who? That's Andrew. Yes, I have I have not identified that after the initial headache it gave me from trying that in the room. So I'm going to take it to a stage. Okay. And you know I what? You know what, Prometheus? You're not going to let him take him to your sage, because you don't want your sage to die checking this thing out. Okay. Um, can we rest for 24 hours here and heal? Well, you could definitely. You only heal one point. Well, uh, I can uh, take out a uh, I can vial. Heal, I can heal Lance. I've got one one cure light wounds left. So is that what you're doing? Yeah, I'll do it. Roll them bones. One d8 plus one. Rolling physical dice. Hmm. Uh, sorry, three. You know, you know, drawn the cleric. What yes. do you think? He's got a bless on him. Do you think that would also add plus one to the healing? I would imagine. Okay, so I'm gonna I guess say yes plus... because you know you're suggesting it. <laughs> it's plus two to heal then. All right, that's a four. 
four points on Scorpio. He's up to 37. All right, so who needs... I, I will also take out a vial of my holy water blessed by Anubis, say a prayer uh, in his, uh, his name, and drink the vial of holy water. Yeah, it does nothing. It tastes terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I had to try. So, Scorpio, so, you're, you're the worst hurt? No, no, Loroth is down to three points. He's right, almost yeah, let's, dead. Let's That's fine. <laughs> it's a flesh wound. All right, so first, uh, first, I want to do, um, I want to do uh, healing on Lorath. So um, use my non-weapon proficiency on him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's uh, five points. Yeah. Uh, all right, so nice. that. Back up eight. Yep. All right, so now I'm gonna hit him with a cure light wounds. Okay, that's a one d eight plus two. Hold on one second. Da, 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 I, I only have sixteen, so. Uh, it's uh, ten. So he nice. is. I'm at max. No, wait. Okay, I just understand. So that's he's up to full. Then there's poor Prometheus. All right, Prometheus, I'll hit you with another cure light wounds. That'll that, but that does it for me. I, I'm I'll, out of healing spells after okay. this. Uh, seven plus two nine. Wow, then, twenty-five. Then I'll hit. Uh, what do you call? It? I'll hit him with um, my healing skill as well. Yep, yep. That's five more. So that's thirty. He's only he's only down one point. All right. I'm good. And then, um, to, uh, all right, he's so, so very grateful. So everybody's everybody's good. Does anybody else need healing or or anything else? Well, they all could use your healing for five hit points. Everybody could. All right, let's hit everybody. I, I could use emotional support if that's a service you offer. Um, <laughs> I'll hug. It's just going to feel really weird in the armor. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so uh, Wordna was down. Wordna can use it. Be up to full. So that's, is that 26 or 24? I'm 24. Okay, 24. So he's fine. He's happy. And Levi, of course. Um, I'm, I'm full. Okay, very good. And Lorath. Did you, did you already did the five on Lorath? I think you did. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. And, uh, and I, would, I know you didn't do it on Arlen. He'd like the five. So Absolutely do 20. it. Okay, but you Jim, can't do we have any long-term consequences of the mummy wrap? Well, you haven't done anything with the mummy wrap. Oh, you mean the mummy rot? Mummy rot, yes. Yes, okay. I could be mean and evil. Gary Gary made you take it back to the town and, and get it cured. But, <laughs> eh, that's not my style. So, no, you have no consequences except for the loss of hit points if you don't make your save. Is the, is the sword telling me anything about the treasure pile we passed? Uh, there's just little gems on it. He's not impressed with any of it. So okay. can we can we scoop that up into the uh, into either Lance's or Wordna's uh, backpacks? You mean the treasure in the middle of the room? Yes. Uh, I'm not going to touch that. Oh, is that is that the consecrated stuff? Correct. Yes. All right. I, 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 the Pharaoh's uh, stash. You got told it. That it was consecrated. Hmm. The statue told it. I thought to Lance. Yeah, Lance knows it's consecrated. Oh, okay. All right. Move yeah, because uh, uh, I, I apologize for for not remembering that. Um, we have a um, like a party going on in the chat right now on Twitch. Um, <laughs> what are they saying? So um, it's it all started a little earlier in the session when <laughs> a guy named Grape Ape Texas was mm. like, "Oh my God, is this Jim Ward jamming?" And I, <laughs> I was like, "Why, yes, yes, it is." <laughs> So he went on to like every old school and OSR Discord that he could get his filthy little digital fingers into, oh my and gosh. and like like mega pimped us, and then all of a sudden people started showing up. Um, oh, wow. We have people from uh, Maryland. We have people from all over the place that are that are chiming in. Um, Lord Dalius once uh, when we entered the room was was like, "Yes, bring on the jackals." Um, <laughs> So, um, uh, uh, of course, he also ca- called us a bunch of murder hobo grave robbers. Uh, we're trying not to judge, but it's really hard. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, Micah Fetz is, is saying that um, uh, we're, having, uh, we're having a good time because it's, he imagines this in much the same way that Gary ran his games. Um, that's, the, that's the idea, isn't it, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, they, were, they were contemplating. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that, Nick? It was a good idea. Yeah, they were contemplating uh, about the different saving throws that were being used against the mummies, and uh, Lord Dalius also commented that uh, 
this has been um, uh, it's interesting because different mummies from different parts of the world might affect people differently so that was kind of neat um, Ooh, and, I gotta write that down that's a great idea well, you gotta make sure you 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 credit Lord Dalius though <laughs> there we go so um, and then of course we have uh, 67 Indian who is a frequent watcher he watches us every single stream um, uh-huh. and uh, he said that uh, oh wow you guys are still alive Thanks. <laughs> Shockingly so. Yes, yes. Should we should we hit the books again, Nick? Yes, we should. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Jim. Jim, you're selling. You're you're working on some Dragon Scales stuff. Oh, I am. Dragon Scales the anthology comes out next month. You can get on Facebook and see the Dragon Scales page for ordering information, or at FiresideCreations.com. Which, which leads me to the question, JR, did we have anybody try the contest we had last week? And you're muted, JR. Uh, I think he's still muted. Nobody has, uh, <laughs> has tried to name the party, but we could pass that on to uh, Lorat the Pompous and see if he might want to take the honors then. Ooh, look at that. Lorat, the- we're accepting suggestions for the name of a party. The party needs a name, these guys. You know, something like Ghost Riders or Prometheus's Best. Some name like that. Whatever you Lorat's do, don't ask the retinue. Lorat's uh, amazing retinue. I don't think you're going to get uh, No, no. I don't think that's going to work. Party McParty face. Maybe something else? Heroic? Maybe something else. Maybe something heroic and uh, uh, appropriate. Um, yeah, I got nothing. Okay, right. he's got he's got let's, nothing. Let's now let's go so the, back to, uh, so the, back the, to part, the game, games. I'm sorry, what? Let's go back to the game. And the yes, contest yes. remains open. So if you name the party in the uh, Facebook page or group, we will uh, we'll pick up a, a prize. That'd be nice. All right. So we're okay. So you here. have you have now have a doorway. Um, who picked up the two rings? Uh, I did. Okay. Very good. So you have uh, you have a uh, a doorway, and you go. Gems, I put them in my gloves of thieving. Okay, very good, because that works. Because you have that special pocket. Yes. Hey, uh, just a quick uh, a quick announcement from the chat. Um, Curtis CBL is uh, is throwing his hat in the ring for a name for us. He's calling us Mummy Runners. Mm. <laughs> and Thomas. Mummy Runners. I kind of like it. Um, okay, so. Oh, and our motto is "Who's your daddy?" <laughs> no, no, no. Game. All right. Um, you see another set of double stairs. Oh my goodness! This is past where the two mummies were. Yes, this is. The, you go. You go ten yards down a little corridor, and then the area opens up again to another thirty-yard wide area with two sets of stairs. Except this time, there's a problem. The stairs are covered in a green fog, and so if you want to go down the stairs, and the sand, of course, goes down the stairs, you have to walk down into the fog. So it's a narrow corridor going about 10 yards, 20 yards? It's not narrow at all, my good friend. It's 30 yards wide. 30 yards wide, proud of that. I would not call that narrow. I would not. What are the sides of the walls like? Very good. They're covered in fog. What part of that didn't you understand? Oh, I thought you said the floor was covered in fog. No, everything is foggy. Every. And is this a standard set of stairs, or are they two? No, standard set of stairs. Good question. So all we're actually really seeing is the sand trail disappears into fog. Yes. I couldn't have put that better myself. Okay. Do we smell anything? Ooh, excellent question. You do indeed smell rotten eggs. Sulfur. Yep. Coming from the fog. Yep. So it'd be acidic. Well, I don't know about that. Mm. Is Is it an irritant to our eyes or lungs at this distance? You haven't really stuck your head in it yet, have you? Well, we're close enough to be like, you know, allergies. No, it, you're, not, you're not close enough yet. You have to actually put your head in it to suffer that. Ah, I see. And this is the only way through it. This is the only way. Hmm. 
Well, I am both brave and expendable, so I will put my head in the fog. Okay. And there's a little acid bite to the fog, and you can't see anything. I mean, you're going to have to feel your way down the stairs. I'll, I'll explain that to the party. It seems to cut visibility. It burned off my eyebrows, but otherwise seems fine. How far does it go? Eyebrows? No. <laughs> Jim, how far do we think the stairs descend? No way to tell, buddy. I so I shall uh, don my assassin's shema, and, uh -huh. uh, so that my breathing and olfactory and nose is protected and everything like that. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. And go into the fog. No, I didn't say that. Don't get crazy. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait patiently till you send Lance into the fog. <laughs> no, I only do that so he can be brave. I mean, I keep being braver than him, and it's yeah, that's it's true. Friendly. It's frank. He's a cavalier, right? Yeah, it is starting to bug him tremendously, actually. Yeah. But I'm willing to do it, Lance. Would you like me to do it, Lance? Would you like me to be the brave one here? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Buy a new best I shall in here first. All right, you you actually get five hundred experience points for that excellent role playing, Nick. <laughs> Baby, uh, for a new best I step through the portal. Okay, you go in. You start going down the stairs. You go ten steps, twenty steps. Let's find out what everybody else is doing, starting with John. I I was uh, watching the stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I am you, the divine okay. curator of the stream. I'm going to be following everybody. Okay, that takes the Levi. I'll follow too. Okay, that takes us to the marvelous wizard and Wordna. Wordna. Wordna will descend. Okay, very good. Into the fog. Takes us to Prometheus. Following, but I'm wrapped up. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Arlen. Mark Kern. Uh oh. He's he's not quite here. Okay, so that's we takes... lost him to the fog. <laughs> oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. He's here. Okay. Are you coming I, in? I, are you walking into the fog, buddy? Oh, uh, first I'm taking my 50 foot rope and an iron spike and nailing that into the wall and then tying the other end of the rope around my waist and then I'm walking into the fog. It's a good thing we work with smart peoples. Roll a six sided die and on a six you're very unhappy. Uh oh. Four. Okay, that's what you do. Takes us to Lorath, the incomparable. I will bravely stride into the fog and stay as close to Wordna as I can. Very good, okay. So, uh, where is it here? You move, ten, you move 20 steps down the fog when a commanding voice shouts at you. You have come far enough. Awake, my blessed guardian. And eat these robbers of my tomb. You hear a huge roar down below. Yeah, right. You hear, I believe there's two rings in Prometheus's uh, backpack. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the okay. Voice, you, the voice here is hang on, hang on. Let me continue on. You hear a huge roar down below, and each of you must make a magic save or run for your lives. Starting with John, the cleric. And don't, what if and we don't, want to run anyway? don't forget, yeah, really. Don't forget you're blessed, so that helps you a little bit. John, are you with us? John, make your magic save. Uh, I already did. 16, I'm John, good. John, make your magic save. You're muted. You're muted. 16, hello. Yep, I'm good. Oh, you made it. Okay, very good. <laughs> Levi! 15, I made it. Very good. The Cavalier gets a plus two on his save. And I got an 18, and I made it. Glorious oh, for Anubis. The, the Marvelous Wizard. 19. Oh, my God. You guys are amazing. Prometheus. 18. Oh, talk on, you guys. I, <laughs> I, I can't believe all these great rolls. It's just, you're doing very well. well you didn't Arlen. have a problem believing all the bad rolls earlier. <laughs> 18. There is that. Okay, very good, Alan. And finally, um, Lorath the Pompous. Oh, I failed. 
Okay, Loreth goes running back up the stairs and disappears from sight. We don't know what happened to him. Can we catch him on the way by? Yes, you can. Grab his rope. I will grab his rope. He's not roped. He's not roped. Oh. So grab his robe. Somebody else robe. wisely roped. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, just but the, cler the cleric grabbed uh, you. Yep. And uh, <laughs> uh, something there... fun to read. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, Cardio. Yeah, Laura at the pompous in the in the the private chat was like, uh, yeah, Laura gets so much cardio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, very good. I'll try to uh, assuage his fears and and uh, uh, help uh, help him get through this traumatic event by telling him I will protect him. Okay, so you're gonna slap him in the face really hard. And he's going to take four points of bruising damage. Uh, what if I, I just, like, rub his shoulders instead? Because it's... No, cool. no. Drop him no. back and try to get an idea. <laughs> Why take his eyes? No, no, no. All right there, Pat and Drove. You do indeed calm him down. Okay, so, are we continuing down to the bottom and ignoring this voice? Yes, and the voice here is, uh, piss off, we've come for your women. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I, I should... I suggest we leave the uh, the rings and continue forth killing these undead, vile yeah, creatures. You can pretty much suggest all you like. Okay, there's the, a sphinx. Don't be such a pansy, Prometheus. Let's do this. Do you see that beautiful picture of a sphinx? We it do. Gloria. Okay, it's a stone sphinx, but the second that Prometheus steps off the stair, the sphinx rises to its feet and says... I am the Sphinx of the Tomb. I'm planning on eating you, but my magic demands that you get the chance to solve a riddle. If you solve the riddle, I can't touch you for the rest of your time here. And he gives you three choices, three riddle choices. And let's see what they are. Uh... I would like the riddle choice that is easily looked up on Google, please. Yeah, really. <laughs> and, and I'm very happy you said that because I absolutely made sure that these weren't on Google. Oh, crap. He okay, so, of riddle... He just riddle, to have searched all of Google. Yeah, really. Okay, <laughs> riddle one is the simplest riddle. It has a theme of books. Uh, riddle two is pretty difficult. It has a theme of sounds, and Riddle 3 is the most difficult of all the riddles, and it has the theme of enjoyment. Why wouldn't we just pick the easiest? I, I don't know. Why? Yeah, that seems like a bad threat. Let's take the easiest Why do you think one. he told you about the three different choices? And also, because we're science fiction writers, we probably should pick books. <laughs> is that what you want to do? Uh, this usually gets group, us in trouble, doesn't it? Group decision. I don't I'll care. What, it, yeah. We, you all have to live by your decision, live or die. But the the Sphinx asked Prometheus. Yeah, you're still all okay. That's not a cavalier phrase. <laughs> your, your alignment just changed a little bit. Uh, one, one, really one of your, I stand ready yeah. to do battle. Exactly. One of your ten retainers just left your service. Do you want books or enjoyment? Let's go with books. All right. Okay, very good. Here we go. Do we have to say what is? No. Phrases. What is Amazon? That's that's a different game. <laughs> we, we could have let Twitch choose, and then okay. Twitch here we. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. This, oh no, there is a house. One enters it without knowing what to do, and eventually one comes out knowing what to do. What is it? Now, I'll be happy to repeat that for you. Yeah, please. There is a house. One enters it without knowing, without knowing what to do, and eventually. One comes out knowing what to do. Ignorance. No. What? No, 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 what no. is the house? 
Let us have a. Um, I'm not saying this to the Sphinx, but I am saying to the group. I believe the possible answer could be ignorance. Is that a house? Uh, I, is I that believe, a house? I believe the possible answer. I whisper back is library. Yeah. They're, they're the same answer. Yeah. Library and ignorance. He, he's wait. He's waiting for Prometheus to give an answer. One is philosophical. One is physical, and so. Um, because he listed a place, library is a place, ignorance is a state. Right. That's true. That's true. But I'm just saying, I like to give points for everybody. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a leader, unlike the Cavalier, and I'm just saying. <laughs> Harsh I'm words. I'm the worst person I, ever. I was just too bad yesterday. It could be a yeah. metaphor for life. Uh, do we agree on library? Because I was going to say outhouse. Yeah. Outhouse. Well, I mean, we're Whatever. we're talking about what it what it is to gain wisdom or experience, and and that's what the creature is, is mentioned. Now, now it could now it could be. A, so that was my original quest uh, idea when he said a house, a school house, right? A school. Let's because go with it. Oh, you, yeah. school. What, that's what cool. I was talking about was the idea: you gain proficiency. You go in ignorant. You gain the proficiency. That's training. So that's I vote for school. So Almost better. noble and mighty Sphinx, tell us the riddle one more time. Yes, yeah, sure, of course. There is a house. One enters it without knowing what to do. And eventually, one comes out knowing what to do. What is this house? And the DM was a school teacher at one point. <laughs> it's a school. It's a school. Uh, a school. A school house. Yeah. So, All right, Cometheus, what's your answer? Almost noble Sphinx, would you tell us your name before we give you the answer? Sphinx. All right. I was going to go with Dave. <laughs> yeah. I like to be here. Sphinx. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Nick? Uh, we are going to give you the answer as being schoolhouse. You each get 1,000 experience points. Yay. You have solved the riddle of the Sphinx. It sits back down on its pedestal and turns to stone. We don't even get a Sphinx high five from this guy? <laughs> you don't get eaten. That's the kind of bigger deal. Um, okay. I, what? Go ahead. On, on the pedestal or around it, do we see the sand anywhere around here? Uh, you do see a trail of sand that goes past it to the north. Is there any treasure here? No, but boy, you're about to come to lots of places of treasure. Your sword is going nuts. I would like Tell to walk up. It, There's a gigantic gem off to the left, and there are a bunch of gems off to the right. Jimmy, any super you magical you dimension to the room, please? I'm sorry, what? Could you tell us the dimensions of the room, please? Uh, uh, once again, your lights do not uh, uh, reveal the whole room. It's so large. Um, you, so in 30 yards in all directions, you just see space. With my vision of 240, what's it? Uh, okay. So you see a door 300, 300? No. 100 yards away to the right, you see a door. 100 yards to the left, you see a door. And, and 100 yards ahead of you, you see a set of stairs going down. Okay. And so, which direction is the sand going? The sand is going straight toward the stairs. Okay, uh, is this staircase as wide as the other thirty-foot one, or no? No, it's like third. The other, the two staircases were thirty yards wide. This one's sixty yards wide. This is twice as large. You're saying. Okay. I'm going to ask the sword if the ge any of the gems are magical. They're all magical. Okay, I'm going to relay to the party that the sword says there's gems to our left and right. And are the doors in the middle of these east and west walls, Jim? Yes, there is. Okay. So I suggest I, we go to the left. Okay, we're going left. That's fine. I'm, I'm going to walk up to the Sphinx, pull out one of my bottles of holy water uh, oh consecrated God. to Anubith. I'm going to kneel at and put it at the base of the Sphinx and grab my silver ankh and say a prayer and apologize for disturbing its house and tell it that we will leave as soon as we uh, end the blighted corruption that is uh, carousing the land. Wow, so um, everything from now on for you is a plus one. Is the Sphinx in the center of the room? Uh, it's in the center of an area, 
It's it's like uh, it's like twenty yards from the stairs. Uh, twenty yards from the stairs we came, or twenty yards from the stairs we're heading to. No, twenty yards from the stairs you came. Okay, got that. So I assume that I would have to untie have to untied my rope some time ago. Yeah, you would have to. All right, because I was all right. I had you know, it's that. too bad. I thought that was going to be a much tougher puzzle. <laughs> you guys weren't supposed to solve it that easy. Well, I've I've actually heard that riddle before. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> I did a research on ancient Samaria. Oh, okay. There we go. So, James, That's we, are, we are moving to the left. Okay. Very good. That takes you to K. And is that? Are you calling left east, Chrome? I'm calling left. I'm calling left west. So as we face the map, not as we walk from the stairs. Yes, yep. sir. Okay, got it. Yes, sir. Let me let me so find. This is K. all I've done so far <laughs> for what you've said for a map. Okay, groovy, nice. You've done an excellent job there, Andrew. As usual, you're a good Thank mapper. You, Thank you, sir. Some Gary Gygax map. would not like you too much. Uh, I mapped a lot of his stuff. <laughs> there we go. All right. And let's take a break real quick and talk. Okay, about, very good. Yes, we can do that. And let's talk about Andrew's first meeting at 10 years old with Gary Gygax. It's a very <laughs> interesting story. Well, uh, the first time he came, he came uh, to meet my dad to play at the IBM Open. And uh, my dad only played IBMers as the guy who was uh, one of the minds behind its uh, work against Kasparov. And so what he told Gary was, if you can beat my kid, then I'll play you. And he wasn't a bad player. And uh, after the game, uh, he was surprised to lose. And he gave me uh, this six-sided die out of his pocket. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's a hand That's... six-sided. And uh, he invited us to Gen Con. And so we drove up there, not knowing it was at the Playboy Club. <laughs> that was a, a little bit of an exciting time, but we had a great time. I rolled my first character with him. It was my uh, first Ranger Thief who died in Greyhawk three episodes later. <laughs> there we go. Very cool. That is a cool story. I played chess with Gary probably 20 times, never beat him once. Wow. He was an aggressive player, uh, and, and he, but he, he played uh, uh, you know, pretty standard in how he played, but he was very aggressive in his moves. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that is a great story. All right, Jim, going to the left. Okay, buddy. You see another blue glow in front of a doorway. Same as the last time. Yes. Well, are we, are we I guess I'll thing? have to do this because that's what a leader does. Yeah, uh, <laughs> apparently, Nick says, Nick says you're ignoring the sands. Wait, go slow with me. Why are we ignoring the sands? Because they went to the stairs. Because the sword wants to go get a gem. Ignore the sword. We need to go solve the mystery for oh, okay. Anubis and Horus and all the other parties, the Black Wizard. Come on. And we need to get a new stinking weapon for this uh, this annoying thief over here with no <laughs> I, I just, there's treasure, but yes, let's follow the sand. I don't think that's a proper attitude. <laughs> Glory is its own treasure. I, it's good to see you leading, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ow! Ow! How far, taking a look at the giant 60-foot wide staircase, how far does it look looking down? No, it, it's at least 60 yards. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is covered or not covered in mist? No, not covered in mist. You can walk right down it. We do. Do we uh, want to look and inspect for potential traps there, uh, Mighty Thief? There isn't any. Well, there you go. Sounds like we're walking down. Well, how unusual. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Exactly right. Okay, where is the, where are you guys? You know, I think the party motto pretty soon is going to be, Don't tell me how to do my job! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Resolute Jackals. J K. So this is this is J. So I need to find page fifteen. Should be sandwiched in between the other two, fourteen and sixteen. You know, one would think, but uh, but no. 
Okay, you see a room, a, a huge room again, bigger than your lights. It's filled with furniture, and the sand goes straight north over and through the furniture. Okay. And how many stairs did we walk down? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Twelve. Okay. And it Tell needs to be filled with furniture. Yes. Does the furniture look broken like an Egyptian consecration using ancient religion? It's not broken. It's all nice and gilded stuff. It's really, really very cool. So this is a, this is a fair tune, guys. Any gems. No, no, we're, the sword is very irritated at you right now. Only the fact that you gave him a sunstone this morning has him still work for you. Okay. He says there's magic gems there under the left. There's magic gems to the right. Why are we walking straight? These guys. We can use like the power of those gems to grow stronger and mightier. I would like I to pray so. with Prometheus that he might find Anubis's at the way of truth and light and, uh, and <laughs> find a better path so we can ditch that annoying sword. I pray that you will find the way of Prometheus and reject your idolatrous way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you both get 100 experience points. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, I guess we'll follow the path of sand through the furniture. All right, very good. So eventually we go, we probably go 50 yards into this chamber and the area clears and in the center of it is this way cool statue and you won't be able to see it but it's basically it's a jack it's a jackal headed guy with a great big spear he's seven foot tall he's nasty looking you know he's going to animate and attack you guys this looks like a jackal set yes okay uh, is there any? Are there any doors in the room? Well, the problem is the furniture's in the way, Andrew. You can't really see. Roger that. Okay. You're in the middle of a huge room. Is this an undead creature? No, not undead. And you said you said it was a room of approximately fifty, and uh, that's where the statue is. Uh, you went fifty yards into the room. You're in the center of the room now. Okay. And uh, again, furniture everywhere. Got it. And the statue is just standing sort of in the center. The statue is standing in the center with a good, I don't want to say a 10-yard circle around the statue. Okay. And and he's got carrying a spear. Big, large spear. Is it a Hauserbrock? Does it have a big um, uh, straight half on it as well? No, that's a good question. But no, it's a leaf spear. Leaf. Okay, so non-cavalry spear. So that was for you, Lance. So not, not your kind. Okay, so here's the description. In the center of the chamber, you see a seven-foot-tall statue with a, with a jackal head. Um, he has a glowing spear in his hand. Off to the left, way far to the left. Let me look here. Yeah, way far to the left is another doorway. And uh, otherwise, there's stairs way to the north, and that's where the sand goes. Okay. And uh, from our direction, that would be south, correct? I don't know, buddy. It, we I've been, the north. We, you guys have been heading north the whole time. We have. Okay, so then I just have to change our, our direction. Got it? Okay. Um, can we circumvent the statue? At, should be easy to do that. Let's do that. I okay. advance forward to the statue, lest my honor be besmirched. Okay, oh, very right. good. Let's, let's kill the statue. Uh, well, okay, the statue will strike at you first. Oof. Let me get where it does here. Okay, it does that. Okay, very good. All right. Nice big battle now, thanks to the Cavalier. Okay, great. The statue strikes at the Cavalier. Misses abysmally. Go ahead, Cavalier. All right. I got a 19 to hit. Yep. And this is a large creature, so rolling plus 14. Man, it would be Ooh. nice if it was undead. I'd get an extra five. Yeah, but it isn't. So, but you, did you do the bless? Uh, yes, I added that. All right, very good, thank you. So that is 63. All right, that takes us to um, Drawn, who's kind of far away. Um, I'm going to cast aid. On everybody? Yep. That's going to heal a bunch of people, isn't it? Yes, it will. So. Okay, so is it eight points of healing? Uh, yep, well, they get eight points. So if 
if they're down any, uh, well, if they're totally full, it'll be eight points over their normal. Plus, they get plus ones on their rolls. Wow, boy. So, Drawn is very happy with that at 40. And uh, Scorpio is at uh, 44. Prometheus is at 38. Takes us to Burdna, who is at uh, 32. Yep. Takes us to Levi, who is at 40 on the head. Takes us to Lorath, who is at 22. Wow. That's more points than you've ever had in your life, Lorath. <laughs> and it takes us to Arlen, my good friend Arlen, who is at 28. Oh, well, my max is 25. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Isn't that cool? You more. Just All for right. a short time. So that's what John did. What did Levi do? Levi, all you guys are far away except for our good friend, the Cavalier. So, uh, am I in melee range? No, not all? even close. So, I'll... Uh, 50 yards to the stack, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Over furniture. So, I'll... Go. So, I'll, I'll run, up, run up to get... In Miller, okay, you're really not, you're really not running, Levi. You're kind of climbing over and under furniture, but you can definitely be within range to strike next turn. All right. Okay, it's my Roll good it. friend the Cavalier's turn. Twenty-two. You do twenty-two points of damage. No, that was to hit. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. How much? Uh, all I care about is the damage. Good hit. Okay. Fifteen this time. Oh, that's very nice. So that's forty-eight. And for some reason, you take five points of damage. Okay. Prometheus the Bold. I shall move into a position to backstab next round. Uh, it won't be next round. It'll be the round after. Okie doke. Very good. Takes us to word now. How tall is the statue? Seven feet. Seven feet. No, I don't want to hit you. Um, I am going to move up 20 yards and, uh... That'll put you in the circle of cleared area. It will. Okay. Then I will do exactly that. Okay. All right. Very good. Takes us to Levi. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, wait. You're, you were, I guess I'm in melee. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. You were coming into the melee. Yeah. All right. Take us to Arlen. Right, right, right. Lorath. Nope. Arlen. No, I'm doing Lorath right now. Okay. Okay. Um, I will use, I guess, the second scroll of fireball since that's the only offensive spell I really have that can hurt this thing. Uh, and okay. I don't know that it can. But... You, will, you will be hitting... You will be hitting Scorpio for sure. Well, I'm looking to, to drop it like here. Maybe. Nope. So the goal is to try nope, to... Nope, nope, nope. Uh, I guess I will pass my action. I don't have anything I can do to hurt this thing. Okay, very good. And now, Arlen. Uh, I cast Sanctuary on myself. Doesn't and... that put you away in a little dimension for a while? No, no, no. It just means that uh, if anyone tries to attack me, they have to make a, a saving throw or attack someone else. And oh. I, I cannot take an offensive action, but I can close the distance and get within melee range. Okay, very good. All right. And then it's its turn. And it misses Scorpio with a one. Initiative, Scorpio! 20 sided like die, as opposed to a 6 sided die, you cheaters. I got 11. Wasn't like D6 initiative from the original DMG? D yeah, D it was D&D, &D, but Gary always had me use a 20 sided die. So okay. that's what you guys use. Okay. Because Nick wants the Gygaxian experience. <laughs> so I got an 11 on my, uh, on my roll. Okay, you guys go first, starting with John. Um. Da, 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 hmm. I got stuff and spells and stuff. Um, uh huh. Uh, I'm going to launch a spiritual hammer. Ooh, okay, very good. That takes us to Scorpio the Bold Cavalier. All right, 
I got a 17 to hit. So barely, but I made it. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and now my damage, I got a 12. Oof, I could have done better. Nice going. Takes us to Levi. All right, so I, I'm actually debating. I, I couldn't go open hand and get two attacks right up front. Uh, yeah. So let me do the monk thing. Okay. And I roll. I roll a twenty. A, five and a natural five. twenty. A, a five and a five. A natural yeah, twenty. Okay. Go ahead. How much damage? The natural right, twenty. So, uh, roll. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That, right, that means nothing in this game. That just means you hit. We don't do critical hits. Gary didn't do critical hits. I'm not going to do critical hits. Oh, so we've, wait, wait, wait. we've gone over this time okay. and time again. Okay. Still fun right, to so say. I, ro- I rolled a five and a two. Uh, actually, a six and a three. So I have plus one. Thank there. you very much. Uh, on. Okay. That takes us to the wizard. Um, from this distance, can, uh, I'm, I'm within 30 yards proximity. I yes, will, yes. I will scream. I have the power and, uh, empower chrome and Lance's blades with elemental blade. You guys, Ooh. you guys get got- the element that you want to use, uh, fire, earth, air, or water. Okay. So Chrome, what do you want to use on your blade? What's the one that makes it heavier? No, no, no. Come on. Just pick one of them. Fire, earth, air, or water? Yes. Uh, I guess I'll go with earth. Okay, very good. And and was Scorpio the other one? Yes. yes. And I will okay. go with earth as well. Okay, very good. That takes us to Arlen. I'm within melee range. I swing. Okay, that loses your sanctuary, of course. Of course. Okay, very good. Uh, 18. Do I still have the bless? Yes. Yeah. 19. Do your damage. Uh, four plus one plus one is six damage. Oh, very nice. And of course, the bold wizard Lorath the Pompous. You are muted. Who is muted? I will cheer on my companion. <laughs> okay, very good. All right. You could go for hey, you could go for a slap. Jim, can I ask you if maybe I... get the and maybe get the eye? I'm okay. not getting that close to that thing. Does anybody want some coffee? I can make. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> what, what do you want, Andrew? Andrew? What do you want? Since it's simultaneous uh, initiative, would Lance's dice this round have benefited from the extra damage? That's, it's all simultaneous. Yeah, it's all simultaneous. Okay, which is me doing seven points of damage to Scorpio. Thirty-two. All right. Now it's you guys' turn, starting with the amazing drawn. Uh, I'm gonna whack it with the flying hammer. Okay. Very good. Um. Oh, that is an abysmal miss. Uh, we love that. I'm sorry. I stole your line because you say you know that's a horrible <laughs> miss. I, I, we we all can have abysmal misses. <laughs> no, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, really. Which takes us to Levi. I got it. Okay. That's a miss, of course. Which right. takes us to the Cavalier. For a hit, I've got a 23. Wow, you're just a killing machine. Not for the damage, because I only got an 11. No, <laughs> add, add two four-sided dice from choosing the elemental jade. Okay, two four-sided dice. I got that. Uh, that's plus six. Okay, very good. That's... The, he... The statue glows unusually from that strike. Which takes us to the wizard. At 30 yards. I can dish a little more into it. Uh, Point at it and say, she's Dame Fenster. Okay, do your damage. Uh, 11 and my level, uh, 18. Wow, 18 points of damage. Takes us to the courageous Cremetheus. I'm going to back. Clearly, clearly the boldest fighter in the group. 
Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to roll an 11 to hit AC zero. Okay. At the the uh, back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Well, see, you got to tell me those things there. Nick. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're supposed to tell me before you roll. Now, remember that from now on. Yes, sir. Okay. So you do hit and do your triple damage. Triple damage. Uh, we're going to do uh, 12. Now we're going to do 9. Plus 3, 12. Uh, do, does it do fire damage? Yes, but not tripled. You also add the uh, 2d4 from earth damage. Okay. So give me so, the 2d4 separate, my friend. Okay, so we're going to do 12. We're going to do 14 total. Yes, yes. 2d4 for a grand total of six. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Mm -mm -mm. Looks pretty beat up. Arlen, what do you want to do? Full compact travel. Yeah, yeah, really. Arlen? Bueller? <laughs> oh, you. I, I'm here. Cuthbert, right. Cuthbert's right. magic mace will ding upon his head. Okay. <laughs> Roll them bones. Uh, let's see. 16. Oh, that's a hit. Do your damage. Right. And four. Okay, now is my good friend Loras still far, far away? Is it? Is it still glowing? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, Lorath is still huddling in the back bravely. Okay, the statue falls. He's brewing coffee. The statue falls into many pieces. I would like to kneel, place my hand on it, and bless the uh, creature that it once was. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's interesting. I guess you're going to pick up six points of uh, healing. Yep. And, and that uh, spear seems to want to come into your hand. Excellent. Okay. You picking it up? I am. Okay. You glow a golden glow. Nice. All right. That takes us to the path down the stairs, I believe. Yes. We have ten more minutes of show. Okay. Oh, wow. Your sword is really irritated at you. <laughs> That's true. I'm sensing a divorce. It knows that I did my best, right? Uh, it doesn't really think you did your best. You're Tell kind your of... sword that glory is its own reward. How big is the staircase, Jim? The staircase is quite wide, 60 yards wide. Another one, okay. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll walk down the stairs, following the sand. Okay. Hang on just a second. We got any weird comments from the peanut gallery while I find this map? Oh, yeah, there's... Uh, uh... Uh, there's tons of tons of uh, name suggestions. Um, uh, the, I was I was leaning toward a, a combination of uh, Curtis uh, CBL and uh, Lord Dalius, uh, but uh, uh, Curtis uh, shot back with one more that was like, uh, "We should call them the Abysmal Misses." Um, <laughs> that is wonderful. I love that. Um, so yeah, so yeah, there's a lot going on in the in the chat right now. Uh, uh, so between uh, 25 and 30 viewers uh, today so far. So we're uh, <laughs> uh, 67 Indian chiming in saying the magnanimous seven. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I like that too. Okay, so um, big sarcophagus, big stone sarcophagus, and on each side of it is this six foot tall statue of gold. Oh dear lord. And they each have a, a gold staff in their hands. Where does and the sand trail go to? I'm the sand. The sand trail goes right to the, the sarcophagus. Got so it. This, this is it. This is where it's at. Well, yeah, but we're maybe we're pretty spent. Yeah. Well, and wait, so, so someone is gonna walk on, walk onto the bottom of the staircase, and the second they do, the four statues' heads turn towards you and they begin moving towards you with their staffs upraised oh crap fireball <laughs> drop I'm it in sorry. there and back out okay, i'm sorry he used it's the perfect time to do it no, 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 no james he, he did not use it he you did not let him. His, no? his, his second fireball he didn't use oh, okay is that what you're doing no jim i got you covered um lorath has already left so there's no fireball available <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you didn't leave the whole place, did you? 
Uh, he's probably lurking there somewhere. He's just fled back a little ways, but it's too okay. far away to cast the fireball. All right, okay. very good. Right. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. I can't believe all the treasure you guys passed up. I got some big treasures in here. The sword is very disappointed in Prometheus. Well, nothing says we can't come back, right? That's true. Yeah. Okay. So we've got four statues, the equivalent of what we, we just faced. They're in no, they're in gold. They're they're a different thing entirely. Oh, okay, but uh, fire would melt gold. You well, know I, I, that that mm -hmm. that would be true, except you need a pretty hot fire. I think a fireball is a giant Romulan torpedo. We've, we've <laughs> already yeah, really we've already decided that Lorath is too far away to cast that fireball. Yes, but, but have, we can begin to I have my memorized fireball, which I will I will use. Are you going to use it? Yeah, I say launch and point right in the center. Okay, very good. So you do indeed fireball all four of them. And then the sarcophagus. Oh, you're going to love this. I think you can even see this. Let me see. How big is this? Oh. The sarcophagus oh. lid rises up. And this guy in King Tut armor, turquoise and gold, comes out of the sarcophagus and starts slowly moving towards you, and he's behind the four golden statues that are moving towards you. Did they take any still, or no? I got it. They definitely, well, roll me a six-sided die. On a, on a four, five, or a six, you're happy. Six. Okay, you're very happy they took damage. That's 66, you wanna do it? Uh, I'm seventh, uh, seventh level, so that's seventy-six. Ooh, seventy-six. Ooh. I, I'm shouting for Laura. <laughs> okay. Three, four, five, six. Now, now, now remember, this, this is the guy who took out the dwarves that we had no chance of taking out. Before. Uh huh. Tw uh, Twenty-five, Jim. Twenty-five. Very good. Lots of damage on those poor little guys. Now, Lorath will not be down at the bottom of the stairs before those four reach you guys and attack. Did the mummy? Uh, I would take, like to. Re did the mummy take any fire damage? Nope. I would like to step in front of the party and, and talk to the approaching statues and the uh, the former pharaoh and tell them that we are there to uh, stop the evil which is besmirching the land and the great Anubis himself has sent us to cleanse the uh, the evil and we ask them to return to their eternal slumber and leave okay. living affairs to the living. Okay, so collect 500 experience points for a great idea. Uh oh. <laughs> and, and roll a six sided die and on a five or six you're deliriously happy. Four? Four. They, Wait, he's got they, blast. He's got blast. Yeah, he's got blast, and that's a five. five. No, on a five or... Okay, I guess he's deliriously happy then. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, the, the mummy goes back into his sarcophagus, and the statues go back around the sarcophagus. Okay. So, okay. Obvious, obviously, this isn't the mummy, then, that's creating the problem. Well, why, is, because the blue why, is the, why is that obvious? Have oh. you ever seen a ma magic turquoise and gold mummy before? Uh, no. No. And, but, and the blue sand goes right up to the sarcophagus. Oh, I didn't hear that part, so... All right, cool. I, I, will, I will, as we are exiting the, um, the facility, uh, discuss with Prometheus, asking him to leave the rings which he has secreted into his gloves that we might leave the tomb of the pharaohs and Anubis untouched and unsullied. Yeah, okay. You already killed a bunch of stuff, so <laughs> untouched, untouched is not happening. I will, I, will do, I will do it for him. Okay, if, so where are you putting if, those two rings? If he will give me the gem. The red gem that yes. he's in control of? Yes. That's at the temple of Anubis. Yeah, okay. You're in control of it. If you say, here, Prometheus, you can have it, then Prometheus can just go and pick it up. He's asking for a trade. Yikes. Let's do it. Okay. It's a done deal. All right. Happy sword. Can I have my wish now? When you get the red gem and you give it to me, yeah. So you just said, when I give you the red gem, I get a wish. When you give me the red gem, when you put it in my scabbard. 
Okay. Hopefully that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> then I get a wish. Everybody heard it. Where yeah. Can you make magical swords yet so we can get rid of this monstrosity? <laughs> I got about three levels to go, kids. Three levels to go. <laughs> so the gem is back at, at the temple. Or he yes, the gem is back at the temple, yes. And he's going to give me the gem on his honor in front of his religion. Yes. And well, I'll, let's exit stage left and... and uh, I will move. hand him the rings so that he can place them wherever he wants. Where are you going to place the rings? Uh, I'm going to leave them at the statue of Anubis and say in a prayer of apology for disturbing his tomb. Okay. And uh, I guess that's going to wrap up the show for today. Chris Fox, thank you for joining us. We want you to know that uh, anytime you want to come back, buddy, we would love to have you. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to throw more fireballs and James won't be so mean to you. <laughs> <laughs> that, you that's guys, his job, man. He's just doing what a GM's supposed I, to do. I, I did not expect you guys to do this well. None of you died. I'm, I'm very proud of all of you. All right. Well, well take us out, buddy. Right on. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What's that, uh, uh, Chris? I said thanks for having me. I had a great time. Thank oh, yeah. you. We loved having you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely going to bribe you to come back. Uh, what, what is it? Coffee, candy, uh, shaving implements? What is it? Mostly caffeine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, we got you covered. Uh, we wanted to thank everybody who uh, joined us on Twitch. Uh, Great Bay, uh, uh, Texas, wanted to say thank you again for uh, pushing the word out and for all the guys who uh, were giving us some great names. We're going to we're gonna try and scroll through those and see what trouble we can get into, possibly uh, um, uh, dig out some pri fantastic prizes. We still have a few prizes from last week left over um, from uh, Chuck Rice's uh, uh, Evil Streets, uh, City of Solstice. Uh, so those can be up for grabs. Uh, or great campaign setting, kind of like uh, fantasy meets uh, the Untouchables, set in old D and D. So uh, really, really cool. We want to thank the panel for coming out, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, all the places where you can find old school D and D. Thanks, guys. <laughs>